Attention please. This uploading is only for educational purpose. No intention to infringe copyrights. Learning English with subtitles G. Pitchell. Follow us. Injured animals are a frequent reason for the SPCA to be called out to neighbourhoods all around Auckland. Thankfully, not all are life or death situations. Today, Inspector Todd Neal has been asked to investigate a wandering and injured German Shepherd found by a young child near his school. Right, this is the dog then. Good. Take it. This is him. Okay, what's the story? How did he turn up here? Oh, um, I was walking home from school and he um, started following me. It seems to be sort of followed the right boy home. Me, Jonathan, Adam, Thomas, and James called um, the dog Spiky. Mm -hmm. Spiky. Oh, yeah, he's got a bit of sore, sore toe. Oh, that toe doesn't look good. Oh, it's and almost come on, off. And he's been hurt on, on the back leg. Oh, okay, yep. Somebody's put a plaster on it. Oh, that was nice of them. Seems in pretty good nick other than that, though. Oh, cool. I'll grab a lead out of the back and we'll um, get him loaded up and down to the vets. Thank you. Cool. Good one. Normally, Todd would head back to the SPCA headquarters, but it's after hours and the dog needs medical help. So they've come to Onima Road Vet Clinic for some care and attention. Oh, yeah. One dog has possibly been knocked over. Oh, really? What's that? Um, all's well. They'll take um, care of him overnight. They'll um, make sure his um, toes sort of bandaged up and give him some antibiotics, make sure no infection gets in there. And um, then if no one starts ringing around looking for a dog or looking for their German Shepherd and that, then we'll come and pick them up tomorrow and take them back out to the SPCA and wait for people to start ringing us. Earlier today, Inspector Karen Lowndes faced a grim scene of badly mauled and dying sheep. Now she has a lead on two dogs who may be responsible. The owners aren't home, but two dogs are. It's time for a closer look. Karen needs evidence. Bloodstains or tufts of sheep wool would be a giveaway, but there's nothing conclusive. Thank you. Thank you. Come here. Oh, yeah, I think we've got the cockroach, but how can I prove that, you know? What about sheep wool on the collar? I might like clutching its drawers here, and that she could sleep on a sheepskin wool rug inside. I'm fairly sure with the evidence that we've got of the sighting the first thing this morning and then arriving and at the property and having these two dogs um, free running out on the street right outside where um, the sheep have been attacked, covered in mud, um, and then finding out that they've been out all night you know, and finding that these two dogs have um, harassed some rabbits up the road as well previously. So I'm 99% sure it's these two dogs. Although they look like lovely little angels now, um, I don't think this is what they were doing last night. But with no actual witnesses to the attacks on the sheep, there's insufficient evidence to press charges. Hello. It's judgment day for the injured gannet. Bird wing volunteer Pam has done all she can do to bring it back to full health, but there's been no real improvement. Now the bird's fate is out of her hands. So Pam, what's happening today? Well, he's going to the vet to have that wing assessed, possibly x-rayed. Um, it's possibly a dislocation there, and we'll make, an, make a decision after that. <laughs> Do you want me to take that? Oh, I have got the... Yeah. Pam's I'm passing the bird over to Inspector John Hedy Meyer, who will oversee the gannet's visit to vet bed and Westra. Don't put your hand in the box, you'll lose it. Oh, no. <laughs> Big day for the gannet. Oh, it's been a bit nasty, this one. That's not unusual. <sighs> Birds like this aren't yeah. used to human contact, and too much stress can affect their chances of survival. Baron donates his time and his okay. clinic's facilities to help save these big seabirds. It's the sight of the gannet's injury that gives Baron cause for concern. The problem with these is if they, if they, you know, if you can't bring them back to full use, they they can't survive in the wild. 
because they have to, one, be able to fly really well, and then they be, have to be able to dive into the water and dive under the water to <coughs> get their fish. So um, it seems to be in the shoulder joint, and the only way I can check any more is to actually take an X-ray and just see what the difference is. Okay. The gannet is anaesthetised in preparation for its X-ray. Berend has become an important part of the SPCA's bird support network. I enjoy it, and there's nothing more exciting than watching one of these birds come in here and then fixing them up and seeing them go back out in the wild, you know. It's the, the injury is a shoulder injury by the feel of it, and so that makes me worried that shoulder injuries are really hard to clear properly. The key is really going to be what that shoulder joint looks like um, on X-ray. But there's quite a separation between the, the shoulder uh, in the shoulder joint there. There's quite a distance between the actual ball of the shoulder and, and the socket there. He's awake. Thank you. Good. Bring him back here. The X-rays reveal the wing is beyond repair, and despite all the care the gannet has received, it will never fly again. So the decision really is, um, is there any place where he's going to be OK? I mean, I have checked with a few places and I haven't certainly found anywhere where they're happy to sort of keep a, a gannet alive and going. Right. OK, I guess the, the kindest thing for it is to, to put it to sleep. Yeah. And, um, yeah. I think would be quite happy to make that, that decision. Yeah. Are you happy with that? Yeah, I, th I, I think that's the only decision to make, really, in this situation. Unfortunately. Aye. The future is brighter for the German Shepherd. It's been reunited with its owner. I worried very much that night and I thought he must be gone because our many friends told me if he went out he will be back the same day but he didn't come back. To ensure the frisky fella can be identified should he shoot through again, Todd has popped by with a special and useful gift. Um, I bought you just a little tag. Uh -huh. Okay, with his name on it and your phone number. Yeah. To put on his collar, just so I mean if he does happen to leap through any more windows or over any fences if someone does find them they obviously know who um, to call and where to return him back to. He went out from that brick window so we went out to the um we went but we couldn't find him and I I went to the internet to SP SPCA and uh, they told me go to the nearest vet to find the lost dog and then the next day I just went to the vet and then I found him. The last time Jim Boyd from the SPCA was here, he issued a legal notice against the owner of these pigs. He wanted to see their environment improved. A week later, he's pleased with what he finds. Pig paradise in the Bay of Islands. Something good? She's actually put on a shape weight already. Although she's still slim in the back here and should be rounder, she's feeding five babies. Look at them scamper around. They're, they're, they're fit, they're good, they're sheltered here. They need an environment where there's no wind and rain, a warm, dry, sheltered place, and they've got that here. They're nice and round, they're looking good. The boar has been uh, put down, I understand, uh, in the freezer or been eaten, whatever. My job is to make life as good for them as we can do. What we've done is improve the situation dramatically. And I guess from an SPCA perspective, too often we're the ambulance at the bottom of the cliff. We're picking up the pieces when it's too late to improve something. So this is a situation where as an inspector personally, I've got to say, well, we've made something better. And because we've made it better, we've done our job. This would be like Christmas for a factory farm pig.
Next week, a castration is scheduled for the stallions. Some baby goats are found wandering the streets of Otara. And a special llama is preparing for its first trip to hospital.